C-sharp is an event-driven programming environment. In coding a C-sharp program, we would have blocks of code known as, as procedures that are linked to various events. And when that event is triggered, the code in that procedure is executed. You see here the basic form of a procedure in C-sharp. There is a declaration statement that defines this block of code as a procedure or sub-procedure. And then there are two curly brackets that mark the beginning and end of that uh, block of code. And the code that we would write would simply go in between those curly brackets. So in this case, I've added the phrase me.close, which is telling the exit button what to do when the user clicks on it. Me.close will simply end our application. Let's take a closer look at this declaration statement. First of all, we have a name of this procedure, this sub-procedure. The default name when we're responding to an event of a object is the name of that object, which in this case is btn exit, an underscore, and the event itself, which in this case is a click event. Now the name is generated by C sharp under certain conditions, but we can name this anything we want, and I could modify this name, and I could name it something like John or Harry or Wilma as long as I follow the rules for naming procedures, which is it has to start with a letter. It may contain letters and numbers and underscores, no special characters. In front of the name of our subprocedure is the data type that is returned by that procedure. In C sharp, procedures are the same as functions, as opposed to Visual Basic where they are separated. So a procedure within C sharp may be a function, and in which case it would return some type of data. We need to define what that data type is. For a procedure that doesn't return anything, that data type is void, meaning it returns nothing. In the case of an event procedure, that typically is going to be the case. It's void. In front of that is an access modifier, sometimes referred to as an access specifier. And the two most typical uh, Keywords used here are private or public. This refers to who can access this block of code. If it's private, only events and access and, and call statements from within the class itself or within the form itself can access this block of code. If it's public, it can be accessed outside of the class or outside of the form. An example would be a company offering stock. They might offer stock initially to private investors. Not anybody can buy it. But once they make an IPO offering and it's on the stock market, the public can buy it. Anybody can access it. You might also think of a private office. You can't just walk into a private office. You must be invited. But a public city park, anybody could walk into. And then after the name is a set of parentheses with a parameter list inside of that. We'll talk about parameters later in the semester. But right now, this parameter list has two variables. One is called sender, which tells us which object the user interacted with. And the other is a variable called e, which responds to different event arguments of the event itself. Might include things of what was the exact location of the mouse, were special keys held down, things like that. A lot of times we don't use these two variables, but they can come in very handy, particularly when I have one event procedure respond to multiple objects. In Visual Basic, part of the declaration statement tells us what event is being handled. We don't have that in C Sharp. Instead, we link procedures to events through the Properties window. So we can select an object, such as BTN Exit, at the top of the properties window, click on the little lightning bolt icon uh, button, and that will show us all the events associated with that object. We could then come down and choose the click event and choose a procedure that's already written for us in code, or we can type the name of our procedure name and it will create these lines of code for us in the code window. All right, so I've created a C-sharp application that I'm currently testing. 
It has three text boxes, TXT first name, TXT last name, and TXT phone. And I have a button here called VTN add, that if I were to add some a name and phone number into these text boxes, and click the add to list button, it would take that data and add it to this control over here called a list box. Now we haven't looked at list boxes yet, but a list box allows me to contain multiple lines of data, one item on each line. And there we see the data we just added. And I can also select individual lines in the list box. We'll look at list box uh, very shortly here in another week or so. I also have a button called clear fields that currently is not coded. And what I want it to do is basically just clear the data that's in these fields and put the cursor back in the first name text box. And then I also like to code this so that whatever text box has the cursor, it is yellow. It's just a nice visual clue of where that cursor is. And sometimes in an application where you have lots of text boxes, uh, it, it can kind of get lost at times. So it's just a nice little uh, hint to your user. So let's look at how to code the clear field button, and then we'll code these text boxes to change colors. I'm going to go back to the IDE and bring up my design form. And so in C Sharp, I can simply double click on a control, in this case my clear fields button, and it's going to add a procedure for me. In this case, it named it BTN clear underscore click. That's the name of the procedure. And by default, it is the name of the object, an underscore, and the event. Now, the other thing that happened here when I double-clicked on that is over in the properties, there's a button here with a little lightning bolt on it that will show me the events associated with this object. And I can see here in this list of events, there's a click event, and I see the name of that procedure as btn clear underscore click. So that's how it's linking that procedure to this particular event of clicking on the button. You can go back to my code. What I want this button to do is to clear the three text boxes and put the focus or set the focus to TXT first name, which will put the cursor there. And I've already done that in this code where I'm adding the button or adding the data. Once I add the data, I then clear the three text boxes and set the focus. I'm going to copy that code and paste it. And I'm going to test. So I can put some data in here. And if I press the clear fields button, the cursor, or the, those three text boxes clear out and the cursor goes into the first name field. It's exactly what I wanted it to do. I'm going to go ahead and clear that code and show you another way that we can do this. I can click the button, come over to the properties, and choose the events button here. Go down to the event that I want, which in this case is click. And I'll just give this a name this time of simply clear fields. When I press the enter key, it creates that sub procedure named clear fields. And again, the name of the event or the name of the procedure isn't all that important as long as it's linked to the correct event over here in the properties. And once again, I'm just going to copy this code, paste it, and that should then work. So two ways that we can add um, a procedure linked to an event. I'm going to come back to my design form, if I double click on the TXT first name text box, I'm going to, get, going to get a procedure here. And notice the name, TXT first name underscore text changed. So that's the text changed event. So whenever the user edits the text in that field, it would edit this code. Now that's the default event for a text box. That's really not what I want. So I'm going to delete that, come back, choose my text box. There is an event here called enter. So I'm going to name this highlight. And 
And my code here for that procedure is going to be txt first name dot back color equals color dot yellow semicolon. And if I test my project, you would see that the text box is indeed yellow because it has the focus based on that enter event. If I tab out of it, it still stays yellow. I want it to turn white. So I'm going to create another event. So I'm going to click on my text box. And this event is going to be the leave event. And I'm going to call this one D highlight. Press the enter key. There's my declaration statement for that procedure. My code is going to basically be the same as the highlight. I'm going to copy and paste, but instead of yellow, I want this to turn white. Let's test this. So I can type in a name, and if I tab to the last name, it turns white. Now when I tab, I want to have this one turn yellow, and if I tab again, I want phone, I want the phone text box to turn yellow, and the previous one turn white. So we're going to code those two text boxes to do the exact same thing. Now I could create a separate procedure for each of those text boxes, but instead what I'm going to do is in my design form, I'm going to choose my last name text box. I'm going to choose the enter event. And there's a drop down arrow here that I can see all the procedures I've already defined. I'm going to choose highlight. And I'll do the same thing for leave. So I want to make it D highlight. And then for the phone text box, for leave, I'll choose D highlight. And for enter, I'll choose highlight. Now, if we were to execute this, we wouldn't see these two text boxes turn yellow or white. We'd only see the first name text box work. And the reason for that is we've defined in our code that it's only the text TXT first name text box that is changing color. I mentioned earlier in the video we have this variable in our parameter list called sender that refers to the object that was interacted with by the user. So I'm going to change my code here a little bit. So I'm going to replace txt first name with a phrase of sender as text box in parentheses. That's going to take this object named sender and I'm basically forcing C sharp to recognize it as a text box since there are other controls and some controls may not have a back color. And I'm going to do the same thing down here on my D highlight sub procedure. And now let's test this. So my first name text box is highlighted. I can type in a name, press the tab key. It's going to de highlight first name and highlight last name. Press the tab key and it highlights phone and de highlights last name. And I could then click add to list. It's going to clear my fields, put the cursor back in first name and highlight txt first name. 